So we seem to say it every time we do an e-bike test, but the pace of development in this sector is blisteringly fast. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's almost like it's so quick that the newest e-bike you ride is the best e-bike you ride every time. But like we've been riding e-bikes for what, three, nearly four years now. So that, that's long enough for like the thrill of just having the assistance and the motor to get you up to the top of the climbs, not to be such a big thing. So with this enduro e-bike test, what we wanted to do is actually find the bike that not just got you to the top the easiest, but rode the trails the fastest. And we put together four brand new models yeah. for this test. We've got the Specialized Turbo Kinevo, We've got the Focus Sam Squared, we've got the Canyon Spectral On, and we've got the Vitus E-Summit. So let's talk about this bad boy first. Um, monster truck. Yeah, it is a monster truck. It's got 180 mil travel, front and rear. It's got an Olin's TTX coil shock on the rear. Just if you're in any doubts about what this bike's for, it's just for like high speed downhill riding. And it's over 50 pounds in weight. I mean, it's, it's a beast. I mean, I joked about actually getting a little ramp when I was testing these bikes just to roll this particular bike in and out of the back of the van. So was that extra bulk noticeable? On, yes, when you're riding? you notice the weight off the bike when you're riding for sure. When you get on the really steep trails, um, it's super stable. The suspension works really well. You've got all that travel just eating up the hits. But man, you've got to muscle the bike. Mm. You really have to muscle it around. And do you think did that take away from the riding experience? Yeah, it did for me. Yeah, I think that not as much as the, the, the butcher tires. They took away more from the riding experience for me. More grip from the riding yeah, experience. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it took away. There was no grip, basically. So like, I tried it with different tires. I tried it with some 2.5 inch downhill tires. And then we went back to like these 2.8 maxes just because it kind of comes with it comes with a big tire anyway. So we went back to this for like a little bit more traction. And, and like the, the big tires give it a little bit more pop and stuff. But yeah, I just think the overall weight of the bike, it makes it a bit of a one trick pony. Mm. It's kind of like grind up the fire road, smash the downhill. Yeah. Whereas the other bikes in the test are much more like enduro bikes. You know, they're definitely better on the single track. They're better when the gradient's not so, you know, you don't have to have super steep gradient to make it work. And I think Specialized was kind of missing an enduro bike. Yeah. You know, they had the Levo, the Turbo yeah. Levo, which was kind of like, which was a great bike when it was introduced, but it was a bit dated, it was a bit short, a bit steep, yeah. not a lot of, not tons of travel. And then they get this at the other end of the spectrum, just this huge bike. And there's not, there was kind of nothing in the middle until they mm. just launched the new Turbo Levo. Yeah. yeah. Which has moved the game on considerably. Yeah, um, it has. Um, but it's taken, but this bike still got a lot of what the new bike has. And I think, I think some of the things I really liked about this bike and the Specialized e-bikes in particular is the integration. Mm. I mean, there's streets ahead of everyone else. I think the only, the only other brand that comes close to having that look and feel was Rocky Mountain. Yeah. I really like the fact there's no display. Yeah. Um, it's not distractive. The little toggle remote, yeah. remote switch up here on the bar is super clean. It's not going to get damaged when you crash. It's really easy to use, really intuitive. And um, means you can run a proper drop yeah. remote on there. Yeah, totally. Which brings us to one of the things I don't like about the bike, <laughs> and that's the Woo dropper. I mean, they say... It's got 150 mil drop, but that's because the kind of the saddle tilts should, as it should, drops. Should we do a demo? Yeah, yeah, but stand, like, stand back. I should, should have protective eyewear on for this. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> so yeah, so the angle of the saddle changes as it goes up and down, but it really hasn't got 150 mil drop. And it's got quite a high stack height here. Yeah. And the bike's not particularly low here either. So you always feel like the saddle's a little bit in the way and it's yeah. a bit bulky and stuff. But then it's got like the swap bottle cage. It's got like the, the little the piece that goes in underneath the chain, like tool. chain tool yeah. underneath your, and you've got like spare links and stuff, which is great. The battery comes out really easy. There's no key. I love yeah. the fact yeah, that yeah. there's no key. To lose. <laughs> or to break off in yeah. the lock when the yeah. bike falls over. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's like, so they're like streets ahead with that. Um, and it's a really quiet motor, isn't it? As well. It's the quietest motor. Yeah. And it's even quieter than the, the next generation that's on the new Levo. Yeah. I love that about it. I mean, you're riding next to one of the Shimano bikes or even the um, Bosch bike, you just notice the difference. Mm. It's like this bike sound, you just hear your tires. Yeah. Like I really like, I really like that about it. Yeah. I just wish it had had maybe 2.6 tires, maybe a little bit less travel and actually be a lot lighter. Yeah. And well, the, I guess the Turbo Levo has lost a heck of a lot of weight than you want. Yeah. So you can see that being applied to this well, bike at some point it's got, it's in the gotta future, be. isn't it's it? Gotta so be, hasn't it? So, yeah. That could be a game changer for this bike. And then if they get the weight out of it, then maybe the travel, it's not the, it might not be the travel that makes the bike feel mm. kind of cumbersome. It yeah. could just be the, the overall weight of the bike. So, yeah. um, Great bike, 
super well finished. Um, just needed, I think, it needs to get you need to get the tire choice right. Um, it needs a better seat post, um, and I'd like I just like to see it being a bit lighter. Yeah. So we've gone from the heaviest bike in the test to the lightest bike. This is the Focus Sam Squared, isn't it? Yeah. Both bikes scored eight. Okay. So which is interesting because being the lightest or being the heaviest didn't be a, it wasn't an advantage or, or like a massive disadvantage. You sort of think maybe if they all got lighter or they all got heavier, then the ratings would be reflected in that. And we talk about it's the lightest. Let's let's quantify that. Yeah. It was uh, well two hundred grams, grams lighter, lighter than yeah. The, 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 so the Canyon was only two hundred grams heavier, heavier than this bike. So uh, and that bike comes with a bigger capacity watt battery. Our capacity battery, and this is three eighty. Three eighty. Yeah. yeah. In, internal. Yep. And then they have the tech pack, yep. which bolts on, which yep. gives you another 380. 380, so it yep. doubles it doubles the capacity. But you have to buy that extra. Yes, and this is also so. So that gets us nicely to the price. Like this is the most expensive bike in the yep. test. Um, it's six seven. Yeah. So you have to buy extra battery capacity on top of that when you get a full aluminium frame. It just seems a little bit steep, doesn't? It? I yep. mean, I know. You've got factory level suspension. You've even got a Kashima seat post. Not that maybe you need one. Um, and it looks amazing, but just for that sort of money, I'd expect the tech pack to be part of the package. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah. I, mean, I don't know what you yeah. think on that. Um, so. And also, the, you know, having ridden it, the, the focus with the tech pack and without the tech pack, yeah. you, it really does change the handling when you put that tech pack on. Yeah, uh, totally. Well, it's know, a lot of extra weight. It's just it's, like it's, high up, isn't it's it? It's so. 2.2 2 kilos. Yeah. High up, bolted and, on. It, and it completely changes the dynamic of the bike. Yeah, I mean, um, as it stands without it, I think it looks pretty good. It's like it's a sleek design. You barely notice in some yeah. some of the photos we took. You barely notice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a really sleek design. It's got 170 mil travel front and rear, um, so it's a really capable bike. But the sizing's a little bit like European old school because mm. they only do three sizes for starters. All the other bikes are available in four. And this is the large, this is the biggest size they make. And we're like 5'10", 5'11". So there's not a lot of scope for like taller riders on. And, and the kind of, that sort of old, sort of almost old schooly kind of like hump towards mm. the head tube, which is really good for like making the front end stronger. It kind of makes the bike a little bit sort of short and tall. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And it comes with a slightly, the stem's a bit too long as well. Yeah, the stem's it? a bit long. Um, so there's a couple of little things like that that kind of, hold it back. I mean, and one of the big things for me that holds it back is like the 60A rear tire. The Maxxis tire is a great tire, but I just think on an e-bike, especially if you're running like um, like the smaller volume mm. tires, you got to have the rubber. You've got to mm. have the right rubber on the back and the harder rubber. I mean, I remember just climbing up kind of gravelly fire roads, like little steep sections, and you'd feel it mm. spinning yeah. just because it didn't have the yeah. traction. And I think it might also be because this bike felt sort of like it was optimized for pedaling. Yeah. It's got a really good like sort of power wheelie sprint to it. It's kind of fun, even though it's got like a longest chain stay, it's fun and dynamic. And it really responded to like your your inputs on the gas. And I think that's the trade-off maybe for the traction for the climbing is that it pedals real good. And you sort of could argue that do you really need an e-bike that pedals really well yeah. when you've got yeah, the yeah. motor helping you out? You certainly yeah. don't need to worry about rolling resistance. No, you don't. And maybe the reason why they've gone with this like harder compound tire in the rear is because of the lower capacity battery. Because what I really noticed with the Specialized, when I changed the tires and put like downhill tires on and on the, on the Vetus hmm. with like the, the slower rubber, is it, it drains your battery more. Yeah. Just the same way that it drains your energy more when yeah. you're riding a slow rolling tire, it uses more battery power. So maybe that's kind of part of their compromise Thinner case and two, so easier to puncture, saves weight. Those are the key things I thought held it back. Things I really liked about it is that, I mean, everybody goes on about short chain stays. I actually quite like a longer chain stay, and I found myself really centered on this bike. Mm. Like, um, yes, I think the stem is a bit too long, and I think in terms it's a bit high, but it just seemed to like two wheel. Mm. It just the yeah. back end could step out, and you just, I mean, when I was yeah. following you yesterday, the back end stepped out quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. um, and like, but you always felt like it, it was kind of predictable and controlled yeah. Yeah. and I felt really centered. So I think they've done, they did a really good job in balancing the suspension and balancing the weight distribution on the bike. Just needs a grippier rear tire. I think they need, they need some long, they need some extra reach for bigger yeah. sizes and um, needs a shorter stem. So there's definitely things about it that I don't think are perfect. I think you also, you've, you've, you've got to be, 
in terms of the battery capacity, it has to work for the rides you do. What you do, yeah. Because um, you know, if you're going to be doing long rides, you, well, you, you're just managing that battery or power that um, consumption all the time. Yeah. And I don't want to ride with the, with the tech packs. It just it doesn't feel fun yeah. when you're riding. Like if you only it. ever do an hour after work, it's fine. And you blast it out. Yeah. It's great. And 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 like that's. I think it's, it I've works, done some it long really rides well. on this, but I've, I've been on eco the whole time, and and I'm just having to keep a constant eye, eye on the on, on the, consumption. On the, yeah. the other thing I really like about the Focus is like it's got this kind of like cool little power button on the top tube, and the um, charger just connects underneath the bottom of the top tube, so it's like really easy yeah. to get to. And it's magnetic as well, yeah. which is pretty good. Yeah, the bike falls over. <laughs> <laughs> the problem I found though, and in my situation, this may well be, you know, other people may yeah. be affected by this, is, is I don't have power in my shed. So when I come to charge the bike, I can't just take the battery out. I mean, you can take the battery out, but it's what's, not. What, what's involved taking the battery out in this uh, bike? I think you have to undo a couple of the motor bolts and, and then and swing it under, swing the and motor out, it out of the, the way. Bottom. Then you can slide it out. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be doing that after every ride. So I have to take the bike into the house to charge it or run an extension lead through the garden, yeah. neither of which are good solutions yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. Like for, for people with power in their garage, it's fine. But, but for me, I would rule it out. Yeah. straight away okay. so third bike in the test yeah. uh, it's the first of the two direct sales models and it's the new Canyon Spectral on 8.0 yeah. I suppose let's start with it's got 160 mil travel on the front paired with 150 on the rear and when I measured this bike travel wise because obviously we measure travel on all the bikes most bikes come up a little bit shy this one actually delivered like two mil extra so you're bonus not, you're, not, you're not getting <laughs> shorts changed on the Spectral that's for sure aluminium frame I mean, all of the bikes in this test were full aluminium frames. Yeah. And I don't know if that's like, I mean, they're, they're still quite expensive bikes, but they're aluminium. Um, I don't know if that's like we said at the beginning that things are changing at such a rapid pace. Maybe like to commit to a carbon bike is mm. quite a quite a big deal with yeah. motors and battery mounts and everything's kind of like evolving so quickly. If you put a carbon front end on this bike, it'll save like 500 grams yeah. maximum. And when your bike already weighs like, 20, 20 plus kilos, yeah. kilos. Does, it, does that yeah. really make a huge difference to handling? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, nice to have, but definitely not like a deal breaker for us. Yeah. Um, aluminum is pretty solid, reliable, looks good. They don't even have a integrated battery. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you know, like, and they were, they were quite upfront about that when I went to the launch. They, yeah. they looked at integrated batteries. Obviously they considered it a lot. They decided to go external because they wanted it to be easy to take on and off to charge. Yeah. They wanted the frame to be kind of optimized uh, in terms of strength to weight as well, so yeah. they could actually save a bit of weight by. Yeah, because some of the bikes, it. some of the bikes, like, to get some of the batteries in the down tubes, they have to be huge. Mm. And like they kind of look weird for yeah. starters, or you have to have a smaller battery like yeah. you do in the Focus. The other thing they've done on this bike um, is the motor's clocked a little bit. Yeah. It's clocked up, which is really like, um, which is really noticeable because the BB height on this bike and the travel are really similar to the. The Vetus, like on some kind of like log drop kind of things, I clip the motor on the Vetus like yep. maybe once or twice in the same spot every time, and this one doesn't do it, and that's really just a consequence of the motor being just a bit more clear in front, there, just yeah. extra clearance. Yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. I mean, obviously the big thing with this bike, it's got different size wheels, front yeah. and rear. Yeah, yeah. So we've got 29 on the front and 27 plus on the rear. I mean, you went to the launch. What was Canyon's reasoning behind that? So they, they wanted a. A more predictable kind of steering as they when testing people complained about the kind of vagueness of the okay. big plus tires mm -hmm. but then with the plus tire at the back gave them more a bigger footprint and better traction for climbing yeah. and the diameters are similar but as we well know they're not they're identical not the i mean so. the, the, even with the 2.8 tire on the rear um it's smaller than yeah. the 29er one of the things i really noticed when i got on this bike especially when you ride other bikes consistently with the same wheel sizes front and rear. It has a particular trait to the steering, but it changes the way the bike turns into a corner. Yeah. And it has a bigger impact, I think, changing the size of the rear wheel than it does changing the front. And when I got on this, the combination of the long stem and the smaller wheel, it took me, it took me a little bit to adjust. And if it was my only bike, once you've adjusted to mm. it, that's how your bike feels and you'd be 100% all the time. Yeah. But I think if you had another bike with matching wheel sizes front and rear and you were swapping between your e-bike and your regular bike there's just that little phase of kind of like oh oh just no i turned in it. too much or you know and you just yeah. have to readjust for it and i think the stem 
makes that more pronounced too because the stem's too long on this bike. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, there's good sizing on this bike. In fact, there's five sizes on this one. None of the other bikes come in like a five strong range. And they've got enough reach and size in this frame not to have to go with a longer stem yeah. to, yeah, to I, get the fit, really. I'd agree, definitely, yeah. with that. Um, and uh, the, it's got a little geometry adjust on there, isn't yeah. it, as well? Yeah, so uh, if you find that you're, you're clipping your pedals or like for the terrain you ride, you do mm -hmm. more technical climbing, you can raise it up. And well, one these, thing they've done is, is they've put 165 cranks on, haven't they, to, yeah. to give you some more yeah, clearance. Yeah. I think they got some of the first 165 cranks mm -hmm. that Shimano actually made, yeah. so like they were, the timing was perfect for that. It's got code brakes, you've got plenty of stopping power. I'd still like um, a thicker case and rear tire because I punctured this a couple of times. Yep. Um, it's a charger bike, you can ride it flat out. Um, it just needs a little bit more puncture protection yep. on the back. It's got this kind of unique saddle as well, hasn't it? Yeah, it's With good, it's got this scoop up, up tail. Rear, so it's great for, I mean, one of the things with an e-bike is like, you're gonna climb up gradients that are way steeper mm. than you normally climb. So just having that little like tail at the rear just stops you sliding off the seat yeah. and stuff. And it's a better solution than specialized like woo tippy, yeah. tippy saddle, which kind of like means yeah. that depending on you sort of use your saddle height differently on an e-bike. You can sort of climb with it lower sometimes. So with the specialized one tipping, it can be a bit weird. Whereas this is kind of more constant. Yeah. I really like that. I'm not crazy about the Shimano shifter for toggling between yeah. the, the settings. Um, I prefer just to have the little remote. Uh, well, yeah, they, they do the cheaper one, don't yeah. they? Which is about 50 pounds. And yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a cheap, it'd be the first thing I'd change. I'd change that along with the stem, actually. Yeah. That'd be the two changes I'd make um, straight away. And... I mean, this bike was really, in terms of performance, it was really hard to separate this and the Vetus. Um, and really what, like, Vetus beat Canyon at its own game, basically. It's a better value. Yeah. You know, you need to make a couple little upgrades. Like, you need, you need, the, you need the remote, you need a shorter stem, probably need, like, a thicker case and rear tire. Um, but, yeah, great bike. I mean, I was riding around, I loved it. I just, yeah. I just, it's, it's fun, it's poppy. The, the mm. gap progression, that, that the same sort of suspension progression that they have on the non-E version mm. of this bike, that was our draw yeah, bike of the year. The winner, yeah. um, it gives the bike a load of life and mm. a load of pop and helps compensate for the weight, yeah. of like the inherent weight of an e-bike. And um, I really like that about it. Um, good brakes, good spec. Shimano motor, um, it's super reliable. It's not as quiet as the Bros, maybe not as powerful mm. either, um, but you know, it's a really natural feeling yeah. motor, isn't it, is. it? It feels like you, you're, you're just riding a normal bike yeah, with totally. that extra power. Totally. So yeah, I, th I thought it was a great bike as well. Really enjoyed riding it. It's like a real good all-round trail bike, but you, you can yeah. definitely have fun on the descent. Yeah, it's a total, like definitely for those little, couple of little tweaks, it's a total nine mm. out of 10 bike for sure. Yeah. Like, and if it came with those as standard, it'd have been a harder test to call. Yeah. Definitely. Last but not least, we come to the winner. It's the Vitus eSummit VR. Yep. What a bike. Um, the first thing you need to clear up with this one is it's 3,600 pounds. Which is astonishing. I mean, e -bike. so if you look what's on it, it's got a Lyric, it's got a good drivetrain, it's got guide brakes, wide bar, short stem, it's got a dropper post. If this was just a normal enduro mm. bike with no battery and no motor, it'd still be pretty good value yeah. for three and a half grand. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, it's incredible. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure how they did it. This bike could pretty much sold out even before our test had landed. Yeah. Like it was just so popular. Like, so we weren't the only ones that looked at it and went, oh really, that bike's like yeah. three and a half grand and you get all that? Yeah. It's not just like a good value bike. I mean, I loved how this bike rode because it's got the same geometry, the same layout, it's got the same feel. Like if I get off the Nomad or get off the Giant Rain or mm. any, any basically high-end enduro bike and I get onto this, everything's there. Like your feet, your hands, your position, you're just like, oh yeah, this just yeah. feels totally at home. It's uh, it's fantastic. It's great. So they really managed to make an e-bike that just rides like an enduro bike, yeah. but yeah. gets you to the top. They've got really good tires on this bike. They're a bit slow rolling, and um, obviously you're on an e-bike and you're charging. I mean, you could take this bike anywhere and basically it's just like hammer it. So they've nailed the spec. Yeah, nailed the spec. It's got a Shimano. It's the only bike with the the Shimano drivetrain, not SRAM drivetrain. Yep. Um, so obviously got, it's got Shimano motor, um, but it's also got Shimano cassette, Shimano shifter, shadow rear mech. I think Vetus um, missed a trick with this bike by specking the SLX shifter, because if they'd have gone one up to XT, it would have had the, the multi-release. So you could actually shift it down two gears with one push. So you'd have had the same kind of drop in gear ratio that you'd have with like the SRAM eight speed. 
and but you'd also be able to go up or toggle between gears like one at a time so so is, is that the only upgrade you're going to do to this bike or no um i do exactly the same thing that we do with the other shimano bikes and i just go with the small the remote the e6000 yeah the e6000 yeah. remote and and i'm pretty sure that's a change that vitas has made for the next generation of this bike and because as you can see here it's kind of got the upside down mount mm. on there and that's that's so they can have like the the dropper remote in the right place and to be honest ugly as that is i prefer it that way around because mm. i use the dropper a lot yeah whereas i'm not constantly toggling between yeah. power settings like on the fly yeah but yeah when you're spending three six you can afford to make those little changes yeah. like no problem at all you're not even going to feel it and we, we can see on there that the, the motor's yeah. hanging lower and more forward as well, isn't it, than on yeah, the canyon. Yeah, yeah totally. And that's, and that's where I was saying where you just... And I think because it's got like quite, it's quite, quite a long wheelbase too, so it's a bit like a truck ground yeah. and out. So it just happens to be... It's got a really long wheelbase because it's, it's a really well-proportioned bike. And then the motor's just clocked forward a little bit, and you'll just, you'll just glance, you'll just clip yeah. some stuff. I mean, it's got, it's got a protective cover on there, so it's not a big deal, but... I was kind of like, it was kind of noticeable given that the BB height's really similar to the Canyon, mm. but it didn't happen on the Canyon, and then that's what brought it to my attention, so. So you'd say this is probably the, was this the most fun bike to ride? Was it pretty close between this and the Canyon? It was close between this yeah. and the Canyon, yeah. But again, it's it's nearly it's, a thousand pounds cheaper. That's a lot. It's huge. Isn't it? yeah. It's huge. You can buy yourself a spare battery. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a, that gives you a lot to play with. Yeah. Basically, yeah. So there we have the uh, winner of this year's, uh, enduro e-bike test yep. the vitus e-summit vr so thanks for watching remember to like and subscribe and let us know what you think of the bikes in the comments below